guys, it's great to see you again. I'm Ms. Jolie and I'll be your artist for this lesson. March is Women's History Month and today we're going to uh, talk about the famous female American artist, Georgia O'Keeffe. Uh, we're also going to create a landscape artwork of our very own inspired by her works. And what we're going to need for today is a sheet of paper, a pencil and eraser, a little cup of crayons. Georgia O'Keeffe was an American painter who was best known for her paintings of the American Southwest. Her career began in New York City after mailing some of her drawings to an art dealer there. The dealer loved the drawings, called them the most sincere thing he had seen in a long time, and invited her to move to New York. Her early works were often abstract drawings, sometimes based on nature. One of her paintings, she drew the inside of an iris flower. The rest of the flower couldn't be seen on the patterns all, and shapes of the inside appeared to be completely abstract design. Later on, she relocated to New Mexico. She was fond of being alone and fond of desert landscapes, beautiful and a great place to explore on her own. Her paintings became less abstract at that time and she began to paint many desert scenes with smooth brushstrokes and gentle colors. Georgia O'Keeffe had a long and successful career. She died at the very old age of 98 in Santa Fe. Her work has become an important part of American art. She was an American modernist painter. In her art, she liked the idea of expressing herself through uh, using lines, colors, and shading in um, harmonious ways. Uh, the color and shaped shapes make um, a more definite statement than words, she said many times. Many of her paintings were produced by looking closely and imaginatively at the world. When she painted a flower, she wanted the world to see the flower as she saw it. Georgia O'Keeffe decided to become an artist at the very young age of 10. Before her death, she made more than a thousand pieces of art. O'Keeffe was known for her paintings of enlarged flowers, New York City skyscrapers, and New Mexican landscapes. This is a quote from Georgia O'Keeffe. I'll paint what I see, what the flower is to be, but I'll paint it big and they will be surprised to take time to look at it. Georgia painted not only flowers, but bones, deer, cattle, horse skulls, and pelvic bones. Bones did not represent death to Georgia, but a shape she enjoyed to paint. She enjoyed them very much in relation to the sky. As someone would go out and gather flowers, when she was in New Mexico, she would gather bones. There were no flowers. She'd like to take things home and work on them. My Name is Georgia by Jeanette Winter. Georgia O'Keeffe was born on a farm in Wisconsin in 1887. When I was 12 years old, I knew what I wanted to be an artist. I've always known what I wanted. When I was small, I played alone for hours and hours and hours. I was satisfied to be all by myself. I did things other people don't do. When my sisters wore sashes, I didn't. When my sisters wore stockings, I wore none. And when my sisters wore braids, I let my black hair fly. I rode to town every Saturday to copy pictures from the stack in the art teacher's cupboard. At home, I looked out my window and drew pictures of what I saw. Maybe I could make something beautiful 
At school in Chicago, I drew from statues in the museum. At school in New York, I painted one still life, painting a day, every day. At school, I painted my teacher's ideas. But when school days were over, I went out into the world to discover my own ideas. I went to the Texas Plains, the wild west of my childhood books. You have never seen the sky. It is wonderful. Walked into the sunset. I felt the wind across the plains. I painted the sunset and the sky and the wonderful loneliness and emptiness of the place. I painted day and night. I worked till my head all felt light in the top. I have things in my head that are not like what anyone has taught me shapes and ideas, but I bundled up my paintings and went to New York City to be where the other artists live. I walked down in the canyons of steel. I lived high up in the clouds and painted what I saw from my window, but sometimes what I saw from my window was the far away calling me. I painted a garden in the city. I wanted everyone to see flowers the way I saw them. I looked closely at the flower. I painted a camellia. I painted it big so people would notice. I painted a jack in the pulpit. I painted it big so people would see. I painted poppies and petunias and sunflowers and jimson weed and irises and apple blossoms. My garden blossomed until everyone saw the flowers the way I saw them. But still I looked to the sky. The distance has always been calling me. I went to the New Mexico desert, so far away that no one ever comes. I was so satisfied to be all by myself. It was too dry for the flowers to grow, but there were bones. I gathered the bones, big bones, little bones, sharp bones, long bones a cow skull, a horse's skull, a ram's skull, and brought the bones home to paint. One day, I held one up against the sky and saw the blue through that hole. I painted what I saw. I saw the sky, the red hills. I walked to the hills at daybreak and twilight, at noon and in the starlight. I painted the arms of two red hills reaching out to the sky and holding it. I painted the Padernal Mountains in the far away. I painted it over and over and over again, and then again and again. God told me if I painted that mountain enough, he'd give it to me. I drove my Model A across the desert and back and up and down over the hills. I painted in my studio on wheels until the afternoon bees chased me home. Even in winter, I went far out into the far away and painted in the bitter cold. I painted when the wind was so strong it nearly blew me away. I did things other people don't do. I climbed my ladder into the night sky to wait for the sun. I slept under the stars to see the morning sky when I woke. I stayed in the desert. My hair turned from black to gray to white as white as the bones, I still walked to the red hills. My pile of bones grew, my flowers bloomed in the desert, and the paternal was mine. And the sky, oh, it was still wonderful. I painted the sky one more time. I painted my sky big, so people would see the sky the way I did. I worked from dawn to dusk every day for weeks and months. And when I painted the last cloud, the sun slipped behind the paternal, and I laid my brushes down, kissed the sky for me. Georgia O'Keeffe lived to be 98 years old. In museums all across the land, people see her flowers, deserts, hills, cities, and skies the way she did. Okay, so we're working on our artwork for Georgia O'Keeffe. First thing you're gonna do is go ahead and write your name. And uh, again, uh, 
you have your pencil I'm going to go ahead and use my marker so that you can see it um, so here's my artwork that I'm going to be drawing let's see um, we're going to think what's the tallest kind of land farm we find of course we say mountains okay this is going to be some kind of mountains and maybe there's another one in the distance behind it And I have another one coming from here. There's just a, a series of um, big mountains. All right. Then let's see, I'm going to divide. OK, this is my sky up here, down here. Let's see, I'm going to just bring out a little bit uh, down here I'll have some more like I could be on another mountain ID area here What's the area called between um, mountains or between mountain and hills? What's that area called? Who can remember that? The area between mountains and hills. The low area. That's your valley. Remember the hills just kind of come up a little bit and come down a little bit, like rolling hills. These are going to be my big mountains. These are going to be... Um, some that's on this side this might be a little valley area here uh, i'm actually going to leave it like that i'm going to do the rest of it with my um, crayons and uh, let me just put a few i'll say these are some little heads of well that's good i'm going to leave it right there i'm going to go ahead and put this area here will be my water i'm going to have some water here i'm actually going to have a little bit more water out here too I'm just not going to color it very deep, very hard. I'm going to have other colors mixing in there too. So this will be my area. What's an area uh, of running water um, coming down from the mountain? What's that called? Anybody can think about running water? Running water would be a what? Oh, a river. A river. What's an area that's surrounded by land? It's not running like... Um, the river would be running. What would that be called? Water all, you have your water in the center and you have land all around it. That would be your lake, lake areas, right? Let's see, I'm gonna put, I'm, this is gonna be some area, I'm gonna come back and darken that up later. I'm gonna have other things coming through there. All right, so uh, let's see. Tell you what, I'm gonna have some, say some trees down here. I'm gonna go ahead and put some trees here. Little area of trees. These are, this area wasn't trees, but I could have trees in between. A few more, it might be some areas. I'll come back and color them up in a bit. They almost look like little mountains, huh? So I'm going to go ahead and add, maybe there'll, there'll be a, might show a little branch or such, might come through. I'm going to add a little yellowish. I like to play with the yellow. In fact, in these rock formations that's underneath here, I'm going to go ahead and put 
a little yellow in between each. Actually on the right side, I'm gonna say I have a light source coming from this way. I'm gonna have a light source coming from this way in this picture. And I'm gonna use the peach too on the light source. Oh, that's uh, my tree, all right. So on this here, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little yellow here and a little, notice how I'm gonna kinda like cut each one of them in half. That's because the light's on that side. When you have light on one side, what's on the other side? If, if you have something covering over something and stopping the light, that's where you have the shadow. So my mountains here are gonna have like a little shadow on one side. So everything on one side is gonna be more sunny, should I say. That's why I have the yellow, is because it's gonna be sunny on this side. And it's a mountain, so it can be dirt and dust and sandy. Remember, Georgia O'Keeffe lived around where? The, she ended up living in the desert. She liked the desert. And I'm gonna have more browns on this side. See, I'm gonna have more browns on this side. I'm gonna come back over with the browns after a while. You can actually color them any way you want. I'm gonna just show you how we shade them a little bit. And of course, I'll have a few browns on the other side too as well. Um, let's see, I will come all the way down, but down here, I'm gonna go ahead and have some of it green in the distance. Some of it's going to be green right here. Actually on both of them. On the side of my water, I'm going to have green. Then I'll come back to this. What's going to happen is this is going to be all greenish on this side too. What I usually like to do is draw little uh, lines, little lines, sharp little lines. I'm doing short little lines. See my little lines? This is gonna be some little lines in the distance. It can be grass, grassy area. You know, some grass when it sits there. So you'll have grass because this is where um, they have water, right? Not everything is completely brown in the desert. Also, too, Georgia O'Keeffe did live in New York for a little while. They do have some areas that will have the color, some of the colorings we'll be using, too. Well, I just like to let the, some of the, the light, the yellow, come up. All right. Well, um, down here, this will be the browns on this side, like I said. The others are going to be green trees. In my little scene. I'm also going to use gray. Sometimes we, we use black to darken it up, but I don't want my black to be too dominant, to, to be too dark, so I'm going to use gray in this. So yeah, I'm going to put it a little bit. I'm gonna be using gray on this side after a while. See my, my gray, I'm gonna go ahead and put, put it on this side. and I'm gonna put more brown on here. I'm gonna put more brown on the yellow too. It's just on this side here. It's, it's gonna, I'm starting to show a little shadow. If you wanna draw clouds, you can. If you wanna, uh, go ahead. 
and like the inside will be one color. Okay, then you can put more clouds. And then we'll come back and, and color the areas. I'm gonna just do two. I'm gonna color the areas with the blue. I will be going faster than you, don't worry about it. I'm just showing you how you can go ahead and add coloring on it. See how I have the, the light, we'll say the sun's on this side, right? Now, I like to use my peach color. It looks like I might have to tear some of my, my peach or a tan color. It's just a lighter shade of brown. So I'm gonna put some of it on here on this. on this side with the yellow. Ooh, I'm starting to shake my table. I'm trying to get my little landscape. Remember a landscape? Normally when we draw pictures and we're working on pictures, this is called portrait style and it's also vertical. This is horizontal because we see the, the horizon, the big picture. Okay, so this, this is horizontal and we're looking at our artwork here. And some up next behind the other one is going to be a little darker too. Just to Color, a little color in here. It doesn't matter if it crosses over because I actually want it to cross over a bit. Okay, I'm going to come back with my browns. Now I will be putting some brown on this side just to kind of give the coloring, make them all come together. You see how it looks like the light kind of has shadows on one side. It will shadow on one side. I usually, I usually have my hands a little closer in. It's kind of hard to do it this way. Let's see if I can get it on this side. And it's okay if you get color on both sides. You're going to have it anyway. It is a mountain after all. Okay. Um, right in here, I'm going to go up and down a little bit and put a little, a little of the brown in there. And it's going to show my yellow. Really light. Remember when we talked about pressure? And this is a really light color. Actually, I'm doing all of this with kind of light. And as I go, I can go ahead and put it a little darker. Actually, I'm doing like a great big close zigzag. Great big close zigzag. These here will be green. That's going to be some, some trees. I'll have to come back in and on these and uh, add some grays. Just like I have over here, I'm going to be do doing these down here the same. This area here, these will be greens to show you the color. They'll be, they'll be greens in here. And I'll come back in and put some more green. I'll come back for that. How's your artwork coming? Okay, so I have these here. I will be coming with some more greens here. I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to just go up, whoop, and I'm going to go up, whoop, a few spaces. What's going to happen is these are going to be something. I wonder what that could be. And over here, this will be taller. 
and on each side of these, that's going to be my trees. I, I'm either doing little ones really close to each other. Or a little close little zigzag. And on this side too. The top, you're going to want to have it a little bit smaller. And then I'll have some bushes in here. And then I'll have some more green. My green will come down. See so how my green's coming down? I'm going to add some more on that side too. Yeah, this is on the edge of some water. And I'll have some others coming. I can come back and darken up my water in between the trees. The tree, the green on the tree, green is, comes from the blue, comes from blue. You make green by mixing blue and yellow, so it won't hurt it to have any blue on it. So here's my um, artwork. I want to ask you, um, they also have an area that would look like that you have land and um, it's kind of like a great big ditch. Anybody know what that's kind of called? We have a grand one. We call it the Grand Canyon. You also have gorges and ravines. That's a little small one. Have you ever seen uh, an area where the water just runs off and it creates like a little ditch? Just think of a great big one for big ditches. And then some of this will just kind of mix together. I could have some bushes. Maybe I have some more trees in here. Uh, it won't show it very well because I'm not going to be spending that much time with it. I'm going to be running out of time pretty soon. So here we have, we have our mountains, we have our um, lake area, and it, you know what, you could have drawn one with a river, that would be totally fine. Um, we do have um, the low line area, that's your valley, and um, sometimes you may see hills and valleys, some of these could have been like little hills, but this is a great big mountain, okay? And uh, we have our shadowing on one side, and our light is coming from this way, as you can tell on all of them here. I really hope you enjoyed it. Take a moment and look at your artwork. Turn into you, your neighbor's artwork. Notice the similarities and the differences between the two. Thanks for joining me today. We learned so many things. We talked about the famous female American artist, Georgia O'Keeffe. And uh, we also created a landscape artwork inspired by her works. Uh, as you go through your week, notice the kinds of landscapes you see around you every day, um, or maybe even on television in books, magazines. What kind of landscapes can you create in other works of art? Enjoy the rest of your day. I can't wait to see you next time.